As I suspected, we start all our tests of electric vehicles with charging stations. And today we will get acquainted with the Porsche Taycan 4S Cross Turismo. You are watching the 2 horsepower program. My name is Raul. The basic Taycan Cross Turismo costs 87,000 euros. Our 4S configuration is 101,000 euros, and if we talk about the most powerful Turbo S, then it is 160,000 euros. But you must understand that this is all conditional, in the basic configuration. This version here 4S costs 101,000 euros, but on our test with additional options its cost increased to 137,000 euros. That being said, there are many things that I still miss. But more on that later. The car has preserved, as I call it, conjunctival optics. Most importantly, you can see when you look at this Taycan side, this aggressive silhouette that turns the car from a sedan into a wagon. And of course, when you see this plastic body kit, you will understand that this is a very transparent allusion to the off-road and some specific off-road capabilities of the car. Looking ahead, we have air suspension here, which means that the ground clearance can be adjusted and from the base 15 cm it can grow up to 18 cm. The entire underside of the car is completely sewn up. This is both aerodynamic protection and I think that it is partially protection when you go out on light off-road. But, in the end, it is very beautiful, especially when you look at the protection of the thresholds, these plastic overlays, which add aggression to the car. And when I look at these plastic lacquer linings, I start smiling again, because, you know, on the off-road this is so-so protection, these thresholds are the first to get hit, but the second are the linings that you see on the front bumper. Before we start our trunk story, I apologize in advance for wearing glasses. But we have started, Indian summer, the sun is beating in full force, my left eye has suffered. Okay, we have a wagon, which means that we need to tell you about the luggage compartment. The trunk opens with a button. Naturally, we have an electric drive. It also closes with a button. We cannot close it from the remote control, because the car costs only 137,000 euros, and, apparently, we still have to pay a little more. The volume of our trunk is 430 liters. If we fold out the rear seats, we get 1,200 liters. How much larger is this trunk than a regular Taycan? The regular Taycan boot volume of 366 liters. But, of course, we should not compare all this only with the volume of the trunk inside the brand. What do competitors say? Probably the next ideological competitor of Porsche Audi ALL Road. So, he has a luggage compartment of 566 liters. And this is almost 130 liters, more than the Taycan. But the Taycan has a secret weapon and this secret weapon is called the second trunk. Let's go see how roomy it is. Of course, Porsche car owners and fans of the brand are well aware of how the front trunk of a car opens. But I never cease to be touched by this. You are my bead, the trunk opened. In the same way, you can do this from the remote control, but we do not have an electric drive for the front trunk. I'm not at all sure that there are electric front trunk drives, but it would be nice if they were here. True, when you pay 130, 160 or 200,000 euros for your car. So let's see what kind of trunk we have in the front. I'll tell you right away, this trunk is deep. I'll tell you right away that this trunk can easily accommodate a suitcase for a flight on an airplane, when you take this very suitcase into the cabin of an airplane. What does it look like? Here's my backpack. This is the depth of the trunk. And in this very trunk of such backpacks, at least two can fit. In general, stroking with the Taycan can build a serious relationship.
Finally, finally, I can tell you about the supercharging that Porsche in Ukraine. This is the station here. Its total capacity is 320 kilowatts per hour. This means that this Porsche, which, in principle, can receive 270 kilowatts in 22 minutes, charges up to 80 percent, and in five minutes it can charge up to 100 kilometers of run. This is not the story about Germany that I told you about. This is a story about Ukraine. This is a story about Kiev. Today, this charging station operates for Porsche. This is, of course, very good. Naturally, when you charge several cars, this power is divided by exactly two 160 kilowatts. Our car is now charging at a speed of 130, 133 kilowatts, because the system itself calculates the optimal charge time, discharge rate, taking into account the temperature of the battery. And I must say that this charging station is very complicated. If you look at this charger wire here, it is actually a hose. This hose contains antifreeze that cools the wires, which heat up at incredible speed and to very high temperature temperatures. And the battery itself is deep underground. It also floats in antifreeze, because this very battery is charged at a speed of 50 kilowatts per hour, and only then, using special converters, this very car can be charged at a speed of 270 kilowatts per hour. It is a complex system. This is an expensive charge. I suspect that it costs as much as the Porsche Taycan Turbo S and will almost never pay off for the company if we are just talking about selling electricity. But if we are talking about selling the Taycan, then, of course, Porsche are obliged to have such high-speed charges in order to, to bring the Porsche. Fast car owners want to charge quickly. And they don't have time to pick their noses and stand for two hours at a gas station somewhere, in the middle of nowhere. Although in most cases it will be necessary, because the most powerful charging station in Ukraine today is Porsche. Then everything else is 50 kilowatt hours, taking into account that our battery is something like, in my opinion, 93 kilowatt hours. Well, you are guaranteed a waiting time at the charging station for two hours. If you put a charging station of 11 kilowatts, then your car will be charged for nine hours. If we are talking about an ordinary outlet, well, I think, in three days you will get the desired result. By the way, now let's see how much time I spent on stand-ups around the car, and how quickly our Porsche. In general, I spent 29 minutes, during which time the car was charged by 84% and now it is starting to slow down the pumping of kilowatts into the battery, because everything is already extremely hot. If you look at these figures, you will see that we are currently charging at a rate of 97 to 98 kilowatt hours, while we have already charged 60 kilowatts into this car. Very fast charging. If there were a thousand of them in Ukraine today, I would say that everything, the idea of electrification has won. But we don't even need thousands, we need tens of thousands, but for now there is one charge. But she's wonderful. But I must say that even a very wise Porsche sometimes does not take certain things into account when building an electric car. If you remember, even in the Ionic and Nissan Leaf there are special external indicators that, without such beautiful monitors and without applications on the phone, show you how much approximately you have already charged the battery. In the Ionic it looks like a genius in general, in the Nissan Leaf you at least realize that your battery is poorly charged, half or almost completely. When you look at the Taycan visually, it doesn't show you how much charged it is. I think this is to a certain extent a defect. And one moment. Yes, of course, Porsche has a cool app for this Iona T charging station, it has a very cool layout all over the place, but only if you have an iPhone. If you have Android, then you immediately look like a beggar. You have limited functionality and, frankly, this Porsche doesn't even have Android Auto. We are not considered people, boys. Only Apple owners are considered people.
I understand that this is a tautology, but we have a very cool panoramic roof. I think the area of the car is probably two square meters or something, and of course the area makes a lasting impression. I am ready to give exactly the same characteristics to this salon, these pseudo buckets in Porsche. At the back, by the way, they are made of hard plastic, but, thank God, my knees do not touch these backs. I still have some 2 to 3 millimeters, but there is a gap. We have an armrest, we have heated rear seats, and I must say that here I am not resting my head against the ceiling. In general, there is enough space here, even for a person with a height of 190 centimeters. At the same time, remember that we have frameless doors. Well, I love this solution in cars. And if you look, they are not twinned, but they are probably one and a half times thicker than that of a regular business class car. Leather interior with perforated inserts. Everything here looks really cool, right down to these beautiful embossed Porsche. I think a lot of people agree with me that the design of this Taycan is great. And this car is much more harmonious than the usual Taycan. The price of this beauty and these proportions lies in the details. For a long time I could not understand why it is not easy for me to get into this car and why it is not easy for me to get out of this car. And it's not even that my height is 190 centimeters and I weigh 100 kg. In fact, if you pay attention to my elbow, then, in principle, I am sitting at the pillar of the car. And in order for me to get out of it, I need to move forward, and our front pillar is tilted, because we have an aggressive sporty silhouette. And what does it look like? It looks like this. I lean forward, I need to group, put my leg out and try, firstly, to get out of this large stance, and secondly, try not to hit this stance in front. And it turns out that this is how I get out of the car. And this problem will persist not only for a person with a height of 190 centimeters. If you are 185 centimeters or even 180 centimeters tall, you will also have certain problems. But let's face it, sports cars are never comfortable, and Porsche is probably the most comfortable sports car ever. Thanks to whom? Yes, thanks to test driver Walter Rawl, who is definitely taller than me, for example. I have my last preparation. The time is now 13.06. We charged our battery, the promised range of 408 kilometers, but now we will take an like an electric car, now we will take an like a Porsche. We are located on the Borispol Highway. You can go fast enough here. It is very difficult for a modern electric car. Go faster than 100 km per hour, go faster than 120 km per hour, accelerate, brake, accelerate again. This drains the battery very quickly. And right now we will try to understand how quickly this one is discharged. And most importantly, we will try to understand what kind of power reserve you will have if you drive this car, I repeat once again, as in a Porsche. Because you bought, it seems to me, a real full-fledged sports car. Therefore, I am now setting the riding mode to Sport Pielgis. We also see that it was 408 kilometers. Mileage guaranteed. Now the car, after I turned on the Sport Pielgis mode, shows that I can drive 389 kilometers. In this mode, I take special photographs so that later no one would tell that I am deceiving someone, that someone paid, because, of course, everyone paid, I am deceiving everyone. The mileage indicated by us now is 4,339 kilometers. By the way, I still can't reset the mileage. I can't figure out where this access I have to the odometer, but here I reset the trips, and here we will see how far we have traveled, and so on. So, okay, that's it, we go to the track and understand how many kilometers we will drive, and how much we will spend on our battery charge.
And now, of course, you will hear the soundtrack that you get when you turn on the Sport Pielgis mode, or when you press the sound button in the car. Cool. Taycan, some incredible overclocking, and it's no surprise. The car has 490 horsepower, 650 torque. If you start with launch, then 571 horsepower. According to the passport, this car accelerates to 100 in 4.1 seconds. And right now I invite you to see how it all looks from the outside, how the Taycan accelerates to 100, how it slows down from 100, and what kind of acceleration from 0 to 100 I got really, when everything was measured using the drift box. Okay, 4.1 didn't work for me, but the 4.4 Taycan guarantees you in any weather and on almost any surface. Naturally, our car has an all-wheel drive system. Why do I say, naturally? Because here we can already say the classic system for building a premium electric car, an electric motor in front, an electric motor in the back, a battery of 93.4 kilowatt hours is sewn into the floor, it is large, it is heavy, it weighs about 650 kilogram. And this means that our Taycan also weighs a lot, somewhere around 2300-2400 kilogram. And this leads us to the conclusion that despite the fact that the car accelerates quickly, that the car gives you incredible emotions, this is not a sports car, because if you drive this car onto the racetrack, then the weight will destroy everything. Nevertheless, if we are talking about emotions, if we are talking about the car's handling, then everything here is completely in line with the Porsche. I have already said that we have air suspension. This suspension is completely aluminum. We have electrically adjustable shock absorbers, as I understand it. We have a regulated clearance. However, this suspension not only works for the handling of the car, this suspension also works for comfort. I have a strong feeling that the Cross Turismo much more comfortable than the classic Taycan. In terms of sound insulation, everything is very great here. No noise from the arches, no noise from the glass, and you can hardly hear these trolleybus howling from the electric motors because everything was well insulated. In the car I hear those noises that the developers have specially prepared for me. So, let's summarize the results of our experiment. In Sport Plus mode, I drove 40 kilometers. At the start in this mode, a mileage of 308 kilometers was promised. When I finished, my forecast dropped to 305 kilometers. At the same time, I repeat once again, I drove only 40 kilometers. But the most important thing is not even the difference in the mileage forecast. Most importantly, the consumption of our car has grown to 41 kilowatt hours. And thus, we have a battery with a capacity of 93.4 kilowatts. With such a flow rate, we will most likely be able to drive a little more than 200 kilometers. This concludes the whole story of what will happen if we take an like a real Porsche. At the same time, I am absolutely sure that in normal mode, and even more so in long range, you will definitely drive more than 400 kilometers in city mode, and most likely you will drive these 400 kilometers on the highway without even turning off the air conditioner.
Are there things I don't like about Porsche? Well, I can't say that I don't like something. I love everything about this car. For 130,000 euros, it is beautiful, but at the same time, I understand that for 130,000 euros, I would like this car to have blackout mirrors, and there would be no Zhiguli switch. Although I also understand that it is very reliable, and there is no need to pay extra for it. You just have to know that night mode is like this. I'm sure buzzes and millennials don't know for sure. Among other things, it would be nice to have a head-up display, to have a heated windshield, and it would be nice to have door closes. Perhaps now you will say that I kind of got a little insolent. But, dear friends, where have you seen ordinary Porsche? Where have you seen these ascetics who do not extort themselves the maximum options for the minimum money? In addition to the lack of options, I wanted to reiterate that Porsche does not provide Android Auto for its users, only Apple CarPlay. Are there any things that amuse Porsche? Yes, I really like this monitor for the front passenger, separate, beautiful. He sees how our navigation works there, understands where we are going. And it would be nice if this user could also, for example, watch videos on YouTube or watch some Netflix, and it would be nice if he had a separate option via Bluetooth connect his headphones. I think this is a very good option and a good suggestion because it makes this monitor look a bit stripped down. Well, he seems to be, but what to do with him is not completely clear. But of course, take a look at the Porsche interior architecture. There are no these rectangular hefty ugly monitors here. Look at this dashboard, it's a masterpiece. We have it curved, we have it elegant, we have frameless, it is cool with us. Look at these monitors, because they are convenient to look at. Your eyes move horizontally all the time. This is right. This is how human vision works. Although I am very interested now to look at the monitor from Mercedes, which is 140 centimeters wide and has an area of about a square meter. In the new C-Class, or rather in the new EQC, these monitors will be, but they will be next year. I am also amused by this start button, which is very similar to the power button in inexpensive modern electrical appliances. Sometimes it even seems to me that when I press this button, a menu will appear right now and it will be written, do you want to turn off the car? Do you want to turn on the car? Do you want to overload the vehicle? Or maybe you press the horn again to return to the factory settings. That would be a cool joke, I think. There is one other thing that makes me very happy about Porsche and that is the climate control adjustment. Let me show you how it all works. For this cursor, you move it all. Everything is checked, everything is working very well, and you are redirecting the airflow. But pay attention to how much time I spend on this, and where I am looking all this time. I am completely distracted from the road. For at least 7 to 8, or maybe 10 seconds I didn't look at the road at all, or I glanced there. It's not safe, but it is also very cool and modern because it repeats the history of your mobile phone that you are used to. Now imagine that I am still watching Facebook, but here I regulate the airflow. Do I even have time to drive a car? And Tesla knows about it, Tesla says, Oliver, you don't have time to drive, so we made autopilot for you. And at Porsche they say, our drivers are not distracted by anything, they take the steering wheel in their hands and start pounding with all the money. Fortunately, with this money, they can drive at least 200 kilometers. Yes, I'm making fun of the Porsche, little, although I really, really like this car. On this, I think, we will end the test drive of the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. I really liked this car. I believe its design is superior to that of the regular Taycan. I think this car is more versatile, more practical. 
and at the same time, this electric car does not impose any hellish restrictions on its user. In this car, you can feel the DNA of the classic Porsche. It is almost ready for everyday use, and you will not even suffer from what you expect at the charging stations, provided that there are more of these powerful charging stations. Well, for example, two. Because now, I repeat once again, there is only one in Ukraine. Although, of course, I know a certain number of Porsche, collectors who can already supply this expensive gas station at work, at home and with their mistress, just in case. But we're talking about real infrastructure. We are talking about how we can travel around Ukraine with this Porsche, so that we feel comfortable in the city, and so that we can also safely travel outside of Ukraine. So far, there is no such infrastructure in Ukraine, and I must say that there is no such infrastructure in Germany either. Otherwise, Porsche is probably the best electric car in the world today. As they say at Mercedes and BMW, Porsche is Porsche. And I totally agree with him. You've watched the two horsepower program. Raul was with you, we will meet.